Welcome to a quantitative aptitude video on HCF and LCM from careerright.com. HCF and LCM is one of the basis of quantitative aptitude and hence every placement test, bank, MBA and all other exams always have 2 to 3 sums on HCF and LCM. HCF and LCM concepts are useful in other topics too and a good command over them will help you increase your score. Today we will see some tips and tricks to identify and solve sums related to HCF and LCM very very quickly. More practice questions are available on careerright.com where you can practice with 1000 plus aptitude questions and practice test. So let's begin. HCF means highest common factor. What is the meaning of factor? Say it, let's take a number 6. 6 can be written as 6 into 1. 6 can also be written as 2 into 3. 6 can also be written as 3 into 2. So these numbers which are there, these are factors of 6. What does that mean? These numbers can easily and completely divide 6. That is the meaning of factor. And say if they ask you what is the highest common factor, that means there are some factors okay and out of those whatever is the highest number that is the highest common factor now 6 6 is divisible by 1 2 3 as well as 6 itself so here which is the highest number it is 6 so 6 is the highest common factor of 6 right now they'll give you two or three numbers and out of that what they'll say for these two to three numbers find the highest common factor so you will find the factors for all the three numbers right and out of that whichever is the greatest factor that will be your HCF. HCF is also known as GCD. GCD means greatest common divisor. So GCD is nothing but greatest common divisor that is same as HCF. Greatest is highest common factor. Right? Now let us take an example and see how to calculate HCF of numbers. There are various ways but the best and the easiest way is to, uh, easiest way would be taught by us today over here. Okay, so pay attention. It is very, very easy. Even if you see it once or twice, you will be able to solve it. Henceforth, it would, it is extremely easy. Let's take an example. Let us take an example of say 42, 54 and 36. Right now, find the HCF or the highest common factor of 40 to 54 and 36. Now, whenever we are simplifying, whenever we have a fraction like say 24 divided by 18, what do we do? We start simplifying it, and what do we get at the end? 6 4s are 6 3s are so we'll have 6 upon 6 upon 3 uh, 4, 4 upon 3. Right, so this is the reduced form here. We simply divide. Same way we start dividing over here and simplifying. Now 42, 54 and 36, we can see it is divisible by 2. Let us write 2 and let us divide by 2. 2 1s are, 2 2s are 4, 2 1s are 2. So 2 into 21 is 42. 2 2s are 4, 14. 27, 2 into 27 is 54. 2 1s are 2, 16, 2 8s are 16. So these numbers are divisible by 2. Now next. Now these numbers 21, 27 and 18, these are not divisible by 2, right? So let's try, try 3, these are divisible by 3. Now don't uh, divide by 1, why? Because everything is divisible by 1. If you divide by 1, you will always get the same thing, 1, 42, 54, 36. So start with 2, after 2, let's try 3, okay? 3 7s are 21, 3 9s are 27, 3 6s are uh, 18 okay now 7 9 and 6 they are not divisible by any number now 9 and 6 is divisible by 3 but 7 is not divisible by 3 so all the three numbers there is no such number which is divisible which can divide all these three numbers so we have to stop over here what do we have on the left hand side 2 and 3 right here we have 7 9 and 6 but uh, over here at the bottom we have 7 9 and 6 but they, they cannot be divided further so don't consider only see the left hand side what do you have 2 and 3 so what is the hcf or the highest common factor for 42 54 and 36 you will find it is 2 multiplied by 3 that is 6 you can check 42 is divisible by 6 54 is divisible by 6 and 36 is 
divisible by 6 right there is no other number which is greater than 6 and which divides these three numbers you can check it out so highest common factor is 6 see how easy it was you just keep on dividing until you cannot divide any further okay forget the re remainders and all that stuff just see the left hand side and just multiply those numbers this is nothing but highest common factor or hcf this is how you find out hcf now let us see what is lcm lcm is least common multiple you know what is a multiple say we have two okay table of two is two two are four two three are six two four are eight two five are ten twelve fourteen 16, 18, 20, all these are nothing but multiples of 2. Now, if you consider 8, 12, 16, 20, okay, these would be multiples of 4, these are multiples of 2, plus these are also multiples of 4, but 6, 10, 14, these are not multiples of 4 because they do not appear in table of 4 or they are not divisible exactly by 4. So, 8, 12, 16, 20, these are exactly divisible by 4. So, these are multiples of 4, right, and all these are multiples of 4. 2. Now, we have to see what is exactly meaning of least common multiple. Let us take another number like say 3. Okay, write the table of 3. 3, 3, 2 is 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21 and so on. Now, if we want to find out the LCM of 2 and 3. Okay, how to do it? First, find out what is LCM. LCM is least common multiple. So, find out multiples which are common between 2 and 3. 3. Which multiples are common? We have 6, okay, then we will have 12 over here, then we will have 18 which is common and so on. Out of that, which is the least common multiple? 6 is the least common multiple. So, 6 will be the LCM of 2 and 3. See how easy it is, but every time in exam you cannot write the tables for all the numbers and when the numbers are huge, it becomes very difficult to solve by this method. So, let us learn a very easy method to calculate the least common multiple. Let us take an example of say 250, 100 and 125. Let us find out the LCM of these three numbers. Okay. How to find the LCM of these three numbers? Now, these three numbers are divisible by 5. We can see. So, 5 into 50, 5 into 20 is 100, 5 into 25 is 125. Again, this is divisible by 5. Keep on dividing just like we did in HCF. Okay. What we have over here is 5, 5 is 25. Now, these three numbers in HCF, what we did, these three numbers were, are not divisible by uh, any number or any single number as such. So, we stopped over here, but that we should not do. In LCM, what we will do? Okay, these three numbers are not divisible by any single number. So, 3 minus 1 is 2. So, two numbers, are there two numbers which are divisible? See, 4 and 10 is divisible by 2. Okay, and 10 and 5, these two numbers are divisible by 5. So, choose any option. So, let us assume that we will divide 5 and 10 by 5. 5 2s are 10. Okay, 5 1s are 5. Now, 4 is not divisible by 5. So, write 4 as it is. Right? Again, out these three numbers are not divisible by a single number. Right? These two are divisible by 2. Okay? So, we will choose that. 2 1s are 2, 2s are 2, 1s are. Now, again, three numbers not divisible by a single number then two numbers right one and two or this two and one or this again it is not divisible by a single number apart from one first we tried dividing all the three numbers not possible then three minus one is two so we tried a pair of numbers that is two numbers again two numbers is not possible over here so we came down to one single number that is two so two is divisible by two so we will have two ones are two Two is uh, one is not divisible by two, so write one as it is. One is not divisible by two, so write one as it is over here. Okay, so we got one, one, one over here as remainders, right? So neglect these, or rather, even if you keep it like this, it is fine. What you will have over here on the left hand side? Five, 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 two, and two. So what would be the LCM? Just like in HCF, we multiplied everything. We'll have five into five into five into two into two. That would give us 5 5 is 25 into 5 is 125 into 2 is 250 into 2 is 500. So, LCM of 250, 100 and 125 is 500. Okay. See how easy it was similar to HCF. Only thing is we have to keep on dividing till you get 1 1 1 and then consider the multiplication on the left hand side. Now, before going on to the sums, 
what we'll do is we'll take a look at some tips and tricks related to HCF and LCM. Why do we need these tips? Because uh, if you are using the technique of LCM and HCF in some other topic of quantitative aptitude, you cannot keep on drawing this table and all that stuff. There should be another way or what we can say how we can utilize uh, other ways to guess what is the LCM or the HCF. We'll see, we'll take a look at these tips that would make our life very easy while solving other quantitative aptitude questions. Now, first we'll start with HCF, okay? Let us take an example. Find the HCF of 18, 24 and 30. What you'll do over here, you'll simply draw the table and then divide and find the HCF. But if you observe closely, what do we see? All these three numbers are divisible by 2, they are divisible by 3, they are divisible by say 4, no, they are not divisible by 4, they are divisible by 6, right? So, if we divide them by 6, what do we get? We get 3, 4 and 5, right? 6, 3 is 18, 6, 4 is 24 and 6, 5 is 30. Now, they are not further divisible by 3, 4, apart, uh, 3, 4 and 5, these are not further divisible. So, the highest common factor is 6 over here. See how easy without drawing the table just by observing we could find the answer. Many a times you will find numbers like 24, 36, 48. Okay, And we have to find the highest common uh, factor for these numbers and what you will do is by observation you can see all these are nothing but multiples of 12. Right? Apart from 12 there is no, uh, no number greater than 12. HCF is highest common factor. So greater number should be found out. Apart from 12, no number greater which is greater than 12 can divide these three numbers. So, HCF is 12. See, once you start solving more and more sums, even by observation or looking, you will find familiar numbers and you will try combination of numbers which are familiar to you. Like, initially when we see 24, 36, 48, what we will think? We will start dividing by 2. Then after 2, we will start dividing by 3, then 4 and then at the end of the day, we will multiply and get the HCF as 12. But when you start seeing the numbers, when you start practicing, you will realize that you will you are able to find out the HCF very, very easily just by observation, right? Now, let's go on to how to find LCM quickly. Let us take an example of 12, 36, 72 and 144, okay? So, out of these numbers, out of these numbers, we have, we have to find the LCM of these numbers, right? What we'll do, we'll draw a table and do it. Uh, we'll find the LCM, but that is not the way to go about it. Now, take a look what we do, right? In LCM, we have to find the least common multiple. That means, the number which we are going to find, the LCM is multiple of all these numbers, right? Now, first, 12 and 36. 36 is multiple of 12, that means 36 can be divided by 12. Is that right? Don't consider 12. 72. 72, 36 and 144. 72 is a multiple of 36, right? So, 36 can divide 72, so don't consider 36. Just consider these two numbers. But when we observe closely, we see that 72 is also a multiple. Oh, 72 into 2 is 144, that is 72 can divide 144. So, don't consider 72 and just consider 144 and uh, what is 144 over here? We have to find LCM of 144, okay? LCM of 144, least, LC, uh, least common multiple of 144 is 144 into 1 is 144. That means 12, 36 and 72 as well as 144 divide 144 very easily. So, least common multiple of these four numbers is 144 itself. Say, take another example, 24, 36 and say 72, okay? Now we have to find out what is the LCM of 24, 36 and 72. Over here, again, 24 and 36, is 24, multi, uh, can 24 divide 36? No. Can 24 divide 72? Yes. 24 into 3 is 72, so cancel 24. 36 and 72, can 36 divide 72? Yes, 36 into 2 is 72, so cancel. What remains 72? 72. So, this is the LCM of these three numbers of 24, 36 and 72, okay? Let's take another example, okay? Let us say we'll have 24, we'll have 36, we'll have 48, okay? Now, over here, 24 is multiple of 48, so don't consider 24, 36 and 48, right? 
36 and 48 now let us take out the lcm of only these two numbers we don't need to consider so what will be the lcm over here okay we'll simply divide and find the lcm right there is another way what first we'll calculate by this way and then we'll find down when then we'll check out the other way which is there first divide by 12 because uh, both the numbers are divisible by 12 12 into 3 is 36 12 into 4 is 48 now we cannot divide any further okay we can have 3 over here so this will become 1 and write 4 as it is we'll have 4 over here this is not divisible by 4 so write 1 as it is and this will become 1 so we'll have 12 into 3 36 into 4 okay is 144 so 144 becomes the lcm of these two numbers there's a other way to calculate the lcm in such cases say we have 36 and we have 48 and we have to find the lcm of these two numbers take the largest number what is it 48 48 into 2 what will uh, 48 into one, uh, 48 into 1 is 48 48 into 2 is how much 96 is 96 divisible by 36 no 48 into 3 what do we get 144 is 144 divisible by 36 yes so 144 becomes the lcm right but practice this second method which i have shown right now only when the numbers are small or when they are familiar like 24 36 48 20 50 40 which are easy to multiply right and if they are difficult to multiply or if you find the numbers are big use this division method after elimination okay now there's another thing which is useful from not from the point of view of hcf lcm sums of this topic but from the entire quantitative aptitude point of view now what happens is that sometimes many times you will get fractions you will have to find 1 by 30 minus 1 by 45 now we generally find the lcm of 30 and 45 and then we uh, subtract over in this case how to easily find the lcm and quickly solve the question what what you need to do is 30 and 45 simply take the lcm as 30 multiplied by 45 okay so lcm is 30 multiplied by 45 over here we already have 30 what is not there 45 is not there so multiply 1 by 45 minus here we already have 45 and lcm or the denominator is 13 to 45 we already have 45 we don't have 30 so multiply this one by 30 okay what do we get over here we get let's write over here we get 15 upon 30 into 45 okay 15 into 2 that would give us 1 upon 90 now this is very useful only if there is one in the numerator okay if there is some other number then the calculation would be a little bit different but this is very very useful okay when there is one is in the numerator now let us take a value where one is not in the numerator check out the right hand side over here what we'll have say 4 upon 30 minus say 2 upon 45 okay what we'll get we'll have the lcm as 30 into 45 right we already have 30 over here so 45 is needed so 4 into 45 we have to do what you will get 180 minus 45 into 30 we already have 45 we need 30 2 into 30 60 and we get the answer whatever is the answer okay we find the answer see how easy it gets lcm we can directly whenever there are fractions in uh, whenever we have to solve fractions you can simply multiply the denominator and consider it as lcm now let's see some of the sums related to lcm and hcf question number one what is LCM of 36 upon 225, 48 upon 150 and 72 upon 165? Till now we have seen the LCM of numbers like say 26 or 24, 36, 72 etc. Okay, we have seen of normal numbers. We have not seen the LCM and HCF of fractions. So let us see how to calculate LCM and HCF of fractions. Okay. Now, we want to find the LCM of 36 upon 225, 48 upon 150, 72 upon 65. This is numerator, this is denominator, this is numerator, this is denominator, this is numerator, this is denominator. LCM of a fraction, okay, is nothing but, what do you have to find? LCM, so write LCM, okay. What is at the top? Numerators, right, right. What is at the top? Numerators. What is at the bottom? Denominators right now lcm of fraction is nothing but lcm of numerators divided by what is opposite of lcm h c f okay so lcm of fraction is nothing but 
LCM of numerators divided by HCM, HCF of denominators. Remember this formula, very easy. Nothing, there is nothing over here, okay? Now let us find out the LCM of, LCM of numerators. What is the LCM of, what are the numerators? We have 36, we have 48, we have 72. Let us find out their LCM. How to find out the LCM? All these are divisible by say 6, okay? 6, 6 are, 6, 8 are, 6 into 12 are, okay? Again, all these are divisible by 2. 2, 3 are, 2, 4 are, 2, 6 are. Now, 3, 4 and 6, these 3 numbers are not divisible by a single number, okay? So, three are not these 3 numbers are not divisible by single number. So, let us try 2 numbers, okay? which might be divisible by a common number, okay? So, let us consider 3 and 4. No, again, they are not divisible by any number. Let us consider 4 and 6. Okay, 4 and 6 is divisible by 2. So, let us write 2. 2, 2s are 4. 2, 3s are 6. And this 3 is not divisible by 2. So, write the 3 as it is, right? Now, what do we have over here? Again, 3 numbers. All these 3 numbers are not divisible by a single number, okay? So, consider a pair of numbers, say 3 and 2, no, 2 and 3, again, not divisible by any number, 3 and 3, yes, it is divisible by 3, 3 1s are, 3 1s are, 3 2s are. Now, what I would suggest is whenever you are solving an exam, stop at this, you see that there are 2 1s over here and you just need to write 2 over here, you will get this 1, this would come, this would become 1 and this would come down as 1 only. So, instead of wasting time writing all this stuff, you just need to stop over here, okay? Don't write this. And what you can do is, take 6, take 2, take 2, take 3 and take this 2 and multiply. What you will get? The LCM, you will get it as 6 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 2. That would be 6 twos are 12, 12 twos are 24, 24 into 2 is 48, 48, uh, uh, 48 into 3 is 144. 144 is the LCM of numerators, right? Now, let us find the HCF of denominators. What are the H, uh, denominators? 225, 150 and 65, okay? Again, all these are divisible by 5. Let us, these are divisible by 5. When we divide by 5, what do we get over here? 5, 4s are 20, 25, 45, 30, 5, 1s are 5, 15, 13, okay? Is it divisible further? No number, okay, 13 is a prime number. So, none of the number, uh, these three numbers are not divisible by any single number. So, stop over here, don't go further. What do we have on the left hand side? Just 5. So, LCM of numerator is 144. What is the HC of, of denominator? 5. So, this is nothing but the LCM of the fraction. See how easy it was? Very, very easy with practice. You will be able to solve this sum in hardly 30 seconds, right? Now, moving on to question number 2. What is HCF of 36 by 75, 48 by 150 and 72 by 135? Again, very similar sum what we did in the first sum, okay? What we have to find? HCF of the fraction, right? What we have to find? HCF, right? What is at the top? It is always the numerator. What is at the bottom? It is always the denominator and HCF of fraction is HCF of numerator and what is opposite of HCF? LCM. See, the formula is similar only you changed HCF to LCM and LCM to HCF, right? Very easy. What is the HCF of the numerator? What are numerator? 36, 48 and 72. What is the highest common factor of 36, 48 and 72? All these three are divisible by 12, okay? There is no other number which is greater than 12 and divides all these three numbers, right? So, all these three are divisible by 12. So, HCF of numerator is 12. Now, let us find the LCM of denominator. What are denominators? 75, 150, 135. Now, 75 and 150. 75 can divide 150. Is that right? Yes. So, don't consider 75, just consider 150 and 135. Whatever LCM we get over here, it would be LCM of 75 also, okay? Let's find LCM of 150 and 135. Now, we see that this is divisible by 5, 30, 5 30s are, 5 2s are, 10, 5, 9, 29, okay? 30 and 29. We have to find LCM. 30 and 29, are they divisible by any number? No. So, the LCM of the denominator, LCM would be 5, 
30 and 29 that would be 5 into 30 into 29 what it would be 150 into 29 now let us calculate what it would be 150 into 30 how much you will get 150 into 30 it would be 400 4000 500 minus 150 it would come out to be 4350 this is the lcm of the denominator so what is the hcf of the fraction hcf of the numerator is 12 divided by 4350 okay which is the lcm of denominator this is the hcf of the fractions which are given now moving to question number 3 what greatest number divides 17, 42, 93 and leaves remainders 4, 3 and 15 respectively. Now another tip which would be very useful while identifying whether this sum is uh, a, of HCF or LCM okay, is we have to see what we have to find. If we have to find the greatest number, we know where do we hear the word greatest? We hear the word greatest in HCF, highest common factor or GCD greatest common divisor so here we have to find gcd or the hcf here we don't need lcm so if they say that find the least number okay find the least number where do we hear the word least we hear it in lcm so at that time we have to find lcm we don't need hcf over there okay but here we have hcf another name or another version where we need to find lcm is when we have to find the total of some things like find the total number of marbles or find the total number of toys or something like that there also we will need to find the LCM but over here they need a greatest number that divides okay so we need to find GCD and HCF but of which numbers do we have to find GCD HCF let us see let us see first how to solve this sum what have they given find the greatest number okay now do we know the number no let us assume the number greatest number is X what do they give that when x divides 17 that is when 17 is divided by x we get the remainder as 4 okay remainder as 4 what does that mean if we remove 4 from 17 okay what we will get we will get 13 this 13 is exactly divisible by x okay same way whenever 42 is divisible by x you get the remainder as 3 that means that whenever you remove this 3 from 42 okay you will get 39 and this 39 would be exactly divisible by 3 you will get the remainder as 0 here also the remainder as 0 here remainder as 0 okay same way for 93 okay 93 when divided by x you get the remainder as 15 okay but that means that once you remove 15 from 93 what do we have you have 78 which is when divisible by this number x greatest number you will get the remainder as 0 ok so we have to just remove this 4 3 and 15 from 17 42 and 93 respectively then what do we get we get 13 we get 39 and we get 78 now we can find the factors of these numbers and then we can find which is the highest common factor right so we have to find the highest common factor for 13 39 and 78 we already know that 13 is a prime number okay 13 can divide 39 okay 13 can also divide 78 right so let us divide what do we get when we divide by 13 we get 13 ones are 13 threes are and 13 into 6 are can we divide any further no because we are finding hcf where all the three numbers must be divided here 3 and 6 get divided by 3 but 1 does not get divided by 3 so stop over here don't go any further right so what do we have the hcf as 13 right so the greatest number that divides 17 42 and 93 is nothing but 13 let us check how 17 divided by 13 what you will get 7 13 ones are 13 and 17 minus 13 is 4 so 4 is the remainder 42 divided by 13 13 3s are 39 42 minus 39 is 3 so 3 is the remainder 93 divided by 13 okay 13 into 6 are 93 right 13 6 are 93 what is uh, the remainder 93 uh, 13 6 are 78 93 minus 78 is 15 so 15 is the remainder see 
so exactly our answer is correct so 13 is the greatest number that divides these and leaves the remainders did you understand what we did over here we just simply found out the divisible number we had numbers 17 42 and 93 but they were not exactly divisible they were leaving remainders so we removed the remainders from them so that we get exactly divisible numbers so that we can find the highest common factor okay moving on to next question question number 4 what least number when divided by 36 24 and 16 leaves 11 as remainder in each case now here what is the word least where do we find the word least it is in lcm so we do not need hcf over here we have to find the lcm but lcm of which numbers do we have to find earlier in hcf what we did we had some numbers and we found out the highest common factor for those numbers after removing the remainders right but over here what we have to do we have to find the lcm of the numbers as it is right you can see 36 you have 24 and you have 16 so how to find the lcm you know okay let's start now this is divisible all are divisible by 4 49 are 46 are 4 4 are right we have to find lcm 9 and 6 now all the three numbers are not divisible by a single number so 9 and 6 let's take 9 and 6 they are divisible by 3 let's write 3 3 are 3 2 are okay and here 4 as it is now 2 and 4 are divisible by 2 so we'll have 2 we'll write 3 as it is 2 1 are 2 2 are right now 1 2 and 3 they are not divisible by any number so we'll stop over here why do we stop over here because 2 and 3 again not divisible by any number 1 and 2 not divisible by any number again 3 and 1 not divisible by any number so what do we have for lcm 4 3 2 3 and 2 so the lcm would be nothing but 4 into 3 multiplied by 2 again multiplied by 3 remainder multiplied by 2 remainder what do we get 4 3 is 12 12 2 24 into 3 is 72 into 2 is 144 so the lcm of these three numbers is 144 now what have they given when the least number is divided by 36 it leaves the remainder 11 now if you divide this lcm by 36 you will get perfect division that is remainder would be 0 same case 144 by 24 remainder 0 144 by 16 remainder is 0 but we want remainder as 11 in each case so simply add the remainder 11 what will happen what you would you get you will get 155 now try dividing what you will have 36 36 into uh, we will have uh, 36 into say 1 2 3 4 36 into 4 is 144 and remainder is 11 155 by 24 24 into 6 is uh, 24 into 370 24, 24 into 6 is 144 here it is 36 into 4 144 okay here it is 24 into 6 144 remainder is 11 again 155 divided by 16 same way in this case also we get remainder as 11 so whenever you are finding lcm and whenever the remainder is same in each case just find the lcm and then add the remainder okay so th by that way you can solve this sum very easy these are very small small tips and tricks which you if you solve one or two sums related to these you will be able to remember them very easily whenever remainder is same in each case add the remainder at the end to get the number okay moving on what least number when divided by 20 48 and 36 leaves the remainders 13 41 and 29 respectively now earlier we saw remainder was same but here remainders are different how to tackle it let's see what is the word given over here least where do we see the word least it is in lcm so find the lcm of which numbers these numbers at as it is they have given we will have 20 we will have 48 and we will have 36 let us see what is the lcm everything is divisible by 4 4 5s are 20 4 12s are 4 9s are okay 5 12 and 9 okay 12 and 9 is divisible by 3 so let us try 5 comes as it is 3 4s are 3 3s are now 5 4 and 3 they cannot be divided by any number so we'll stop over here so what we'll have 4 we'll have 3 we'll have 5 we'll have 4 and we'll have 3 what is the lcm over here 
फोर इंटू थ्री इंटू फाइव इंटू फोर इंटू थ्री फाइव फोर जै ट्वेंटी ओके ट्वेंटी इंटू थ्री इज सिक्सटी सिक्सटी इंटू थ्री इज वन एटी वन एटी इंटू फोर ओके इज सेवन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी सो एल सी एम ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर्टी एट एंड थर्टी सिक्स इज सेवन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी राइट नाउ वॉट एव दी गिवन रिमाइंडर्स आर थर्टीन फोर्टी वन एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन दैट मीन्स देर इज सम नंबर ओके देर इज सम नंबर विच इज वेन डिवाइडेड बाय ट्वेंटी यू गेट रिमाइंडर थर्टीन वेन डिवाइडेड बाय फोर्टी एट यू गेट द रिमाइंडर फोर्टी वन एंड वेन डिवाइडेड बाय थर्टी सिक्स यू गेट द रिमाइंडर ट्वेंटी नाइन नाउ ऑब्जर्व वेरी वेरी केयरफुली वॉट डू वी सी ओवर इयर ट्वेंटी एंड थर्टीन द ट्वेंटी एंड थर्टीन द डिफरेंस इज सेवन फोर्टी एट एंड फोर्टी वन द डिफरेंस इज सेवन थर्टी सिक्स एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन डिफरेंस इज सेवन सो द डिफरेंस इज कॉमन ओवर इयर इन सच केस इज वॉट टू डू फाइंड द एल सी एम सब्ट्रैक्ट द डिफरेंस ओके वॉट डू वी गेट सेवन ट्वेंटी माइनस सेवन वुड बी सेवन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टीन दिस इज योर आंसर सी हाउ इजी इट वॉज वेन एवर यू आर नीड टू फाइंड एल सी एम ओके वेन एवर यू नीड टू फाइंड लिस्ट नंबर फाइंड द एल सी एम एंड वेन द रिमाइंडर्स आर डिफरेंट फाइंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द रिमाइंडर्स एंड द नंबर्स एंड यू सी दैट द डिफरेंस इज सेम सेवन 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 ओके just subtract that 7 from the lcm or subtract that difference from the lcm and you will get the answer whenever the remainders are same what you do you add it right when so remainders when the remainders are different you subtract it you just subtract the difference right see how easy it was very easy to remember also moving on what least possible four digit number when divided by 12 16 18 and 20 leaves 21 as remainder again this is like what we saw the remainder is same so what do we do we simply add the remainder to the lcm is that right and why do we take lcm because they have given least number but it is not any least number they have given least possible four digit number let us see how to tackle these kind of sums we know it is least so find the lcm of 12 16 18 and 20 right what is the lcm everything divisible by 2 2 6 are 2 8 are 2 9 are 2 10 are right again uh, these numbers which are there out of that 6 8 and 10 are divisible by 2 2 3 are 2 4 4 are 9 comes as it is 2 5 are right 3 and 9 divisible by 3 so we'll write 3 1 4 comes as it is 3 3 are okay Five comes as it is. Now nothing is divisible. So what we'll have two, two, three, one, four, three, and five. So what would be the LCM? It would be two into two into three multiplied by one into four into three into five. Even if you don't consider one, then also it is fine because multiplied by one is the same thing. Okay? So don't consider one. Right? What do we have over here? Two twos are four. Four into three is twelve. Twelve fours are forty-eight. Forty-eight into three is 144 144 into 5 is how much 720 this is the lcm right but this is a three digit number what we want is what we did earlier was that we found the lcm and added 21 to it right the remainder which is there right so if you add 21 you will get 741 but we want a four digit number and this is a three digit number so we cannot add 21 as of yet right now Now, how to find out the least possible four-digit number? Right, seven twenty is divisible by twelve, sixteen, eighteen, and twenty. That is there because it is the LCM. So, multiples of seven twenty will also be divisible by twelve, sixteen, eighteen, and twenty. Right, if seven twenty is divisible by twelve, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, then multiples of seven twenty will also be divisible. Let us find multiples of seven twenty. Seven twenty ones are seven twenty. Seven twenty into two is. One four four zero. Now this is a four-digit number, right? This is the number, right? Four-digit number. This is the least four-digit number that we can find out. Now, so one four four zero is divisible by twelve, sixteen, eighteen, and twenty. And in this, we add the remainder. What do we get? One four six one. So this is the answer. This is the least possible four-digit number, which when divided by twelve, sixteen, eighteen, and twenty leaves. 21 as remainder we did the same thing what we did in the previous sum we added the remainder only thing here we tried to reach a four digit number before adding the remainder 
we converted LCM to a four digit number by taking out multiples okay, of it, of the LCM and then we added the remainder. Moving to next question, the ratio of two numbers is 5 is to 6 and their LCM is 480, then their HCF is, now over here we are going to learn a concept which is extremely important, okay, related to HCF and LCM. So, pay very close attention, it is not difficult, it is extremely easy, but it is extremely and very, very, very important. Now, let us assume there are two numbers, okay, A and B. Let the HCF, that is highest common factor for AB be this and let their LCM be this. Then A into B, that is product of AB, that the both numbers is nothing but the product of the HCF, of their HCF and their LCM. So, A multiplied by B is nothing but HCF of AB and multiplied by LCM of AB. Let us take an example. Let us assume there are two numbers, 50 and 20, okay. What is the highest common factor for these two numbers? We know both are multiply, both can be divided by 5. So, let us divide by 5. What do we get over here? 5 threes are 15, 5 fours are 20. We cannot divide further, so don't consider these. So, HCF becomes 5. Now, let us find out LCM, okay. 15 and 20. What is the highest number? 20. 22 are 40. 40 is not divisible by 15. 23 are 60. 60 is divisible by 15. So, LCM is 60, okay. Now, what is the product A into B? That is 15 into 20. That would be equal to 300, okay. Now, what is the product of HCF of both and LCM? It would be 5 into 60. That would be equal to 300. Again, so we saw AB is nothing but product of their HCF and their LCM. Same way, let's use the technique over here to solve our sum. Ratio of two numbers is 5 is to 6. Since it is ratio, we cannot use the numbers directly. Let the common factor be k. So, what are the two numbers? It is 5k and 6k. What is their LCM? It is 480. What is their HCF? We don't know. Let's find out. What is HCF? HCF means highest common factor. We have already seen the two numbers are 5k and 6k. Okay, 5k and 6k, right? What is the HCF? which number can or what value can divide these two numbers? Obviously, k. So, when we divide by k, what do you get? We get 5 over here, we get 6 over here. Nothing is divisible. No number can divide these two numbers. So, don't consider these. We have only k. So, k becomes the common factor or the highest common factor or the HCF for 5k and 6k. So, answer is k for HCF. Now, always remember, whenever there is a ratio and whenever you take the common factor, that will be nothing but the highest common factor. You don't have to draw this table and all that stuff. I drew this table only to explain how K becomes the HCF. Okay. Now, what do have we learned? Product of two numbers, 5K into 6K is equal to product of HCF and the LCM. So, this gets cancelled. We have 30K equal to 480. We'll have K equal to 16. Now, what is K? K is nothing but the HCF. So, the HCF of the two numbers is 16. Understood? Remember this formula. Product of two numbers is equal to multiplication or the product of their LCM and HCF. Moving to question number 8. HCF and LCM of two numbers is 8 and 96. Sum of those numbers is 56. Then what is the sum of the reciprocals? Again, very easy. We have just seen the formula. If the two numbers are A and B, then product of AB is nothing but product of their HCF and LCM. Okay. Let the numbers be A and B. So, their summation or sum of the numbers is 56, right? And we also know AB is nothing but 8 into 96, right? Don't multiply right now. What are they asking? Sum of the reciprocals. What is the reciprocal of A? 1 by A. 1 by B, what you will get over here? You will get LCM as AB, you will have B plus A. We already know value of A plus B, that is 56. What is the value of AB? 8 into 96, right? 8, 7s are 7 upon 96. This is the sum of their reciprocals, okay? See how easy it was. Moving to question number 9. What largest number will divide 47, 35 and 27, leaving same remainder in each case. 
what will be the common remainder now here there is a bit of problem because earlier we saw uh, we have to find the greatest number or the largest number and we had the remainders over there right and since we had the remainders over there we simply subtracted and since it is largest number we found the gcd or the hcf but over here we don't know the remainder also the remainder is common over here and uh, we, we we only have the numbers right and we have to find the largest number so what to do let us see how to find very very small and easy trick is there okay now what do we know largest word means we have to find the gcd or the hc f okay that is for sure now we have four numbers a uh, three numbers 47 35 and 27 we do not have any remainder to subtract from these so what to do simply subtract them from each other how to do 47 minus 35 what do you get 12 35 minus 27 what do you get 35 minus 27 8 okay 27 minus 47 in a cyclic manner this minus this this minus this and this minus this what do you get minus 20 ignore the minus sign what do you get 12 8 and 20 what we have to find hcf in hcf earlier we saw we did not directly find the gcd or the hcf we subtracted the remainders same way we have subtracted numbers from each other now find the hcf of 12 8 and 20 what it would be all these are divisible by 4 4 3s are 12 4 2s are 8 4 5s are 20 okay not, they are not divisible any further 3 2 and 5 are not divisible any further so neglect them so the hcf or the highest common factor or the highest number is 4 okay now we do not know the common remainder we have found out the largest number that will divide these and leave the same remainder how see 47 divided by 4 what you will have 4 into 11 44 you will have remainder as 3 35 divided by 4 4 8s are 32 remainder is 3 27 divided by 4, 4 6 are 24, remainder is 27 minus 24, 3, so common remainder is 3 and the highest common factor or high, largest number which will divide these three numbers is 4, see how easily we got the answer, moving on, question number 10, there are three equilateral triangles with sides 114 centimeter, 76 centimeter and 152 centimeter, what a maximum size scale can measure them exactly? Now let us see, this is again a very very easy sum, we see the word maximum size, that means greatest, that means we have to find the GCD or the HCF, that is for sure. But let us first understand what exactly they are asking. There are three equilateral triangles, okay, side of this, then, then there is this and there is there's this, okay, side of this is 152 centimeters, side of this is say 76 centimeters and this is 114 centimeters now they want a scale okay they want a scale that can measure these side uh, sides of these equilateral triangle perfectly or exactly it should not happen that you keep the scale over here then again you keep the scale over here again you keep it over here again you keep it over here and again you keep it over here and this much part is left that should not happen it should perfectly match over here okay and you cannot uh, this is not a regular scale where you'll have markings in between it is a like say a piece of uh, log okay what size log piece you will need so that using that you can measure the entire length exactly like whenever in whenever we were kids we used to take a small piece of wood okay and using that we used to measure how much is the length of the bigger piece of wood or how much is the length of the playground and all that stuff or whenever there is a tile on floor we take a pen and we try to measure using a pen how much is the length of the tile that is two pens is the length of the tile the breadth of the tile is just one pen wide okay same way we have to use a scale okay which can perfectly measure these right this is what they mean such sums are very very much uh, what we say famous and very common in exams so let us see what exactly is the technique over here there is nothing whenever they are asking maximum size scale that can measure them exactly we just have to find the hcf of the given numbers 114 76 and 152 let us see what is the hcf divide by 2 over here what you will get 2 5s are 10 14 57 2 3s are 6 16 38 2 7s are 14 12 70 6 19 all these three are multiples of 19 19 
थ्रीज आर फिफ्टी सेवन नाइनटीन टू जार थर्टी एट नाइनटीन फोर जार सेवेंटी सिक्स ओके सो कैन वी मल्ट कैन वी डिवाइड एनी फर्दर थ्री टू एंड फोर नो सो डिस्कार्ड दीज डोंट कंसिडर वॉट डू हैव टू एंड नाइनटीन सो द एच सी एफ और द हाइएस्ट कॉमन फैक्टर और द मैक्सिमम साइज स्केल दैट वी कैन दैट कैन मेजर वुड बी टू इंटू नाइनटीन इट इज थर्टी एट सेंटीमीटर लेटस चेक वेदर आर आंसर इज करेक्ट और नॉट थर्टी एट सेंटीमीटर कैन मेजर सेवेंटी सिक्स सेंटीमीटर वेरी इजीली से इफ दिस इज द स्केल ऑफ थर्टी एट सेंटीमीटर इट वुड सिंपली बी डबल राइट सेवेंटी सिक्स सेंटीमीटर अगेन ओवर इयर वील हैव थर्टी एट सेंटीमीटर अगेन वील कीप द स्केल ऑफ थर्टी एट सेंटीमीटर अगेन वील कीप द स्केल ऑफ 38 cm and you will get 114 over here we'll keep scale of 38 cm we'll keep scale of 38 38 and again 38 4s are 38 into 4 is you'll get 152 cm that is what they are asking now this can be asked in variety of uh, types okay equilateral triangles measuring the side of equilateral triangles is just one way just keep in mind they generally ask what maximum size scale can measure them exactly this would be the clue Moving to next question, if x minus four is the HCF of x square minus eight x plus fifteen and x square minus kx minus one, then what is the value of k? Now x minus four is HCF. That means it is a factor of these two equations. That means it divides both these equations perfectly. So x minus four divides both these equations perfectly with zero remainder. Now. This is very important. Please remember this. If x minus four is a HCF or a factor of these two equations, that means when we put the value of x equal to four, both these equations would get satisfied. That means both these equations would be equal to zero, right? So x minus four again, if we put it into x square minus kx plus uh, kx minus one, it would be zero, right? Since it is zero zero, we can equate them. What do we get? X square minus eight x plus fifteen would be equal to x square minus k x minus one. When when we have x equal to four, so put the value of x. We'll have sixteen minus thirty two plus fifteen would be equal to sixteen minus four k minus one. This gets cancelled. Fifteen plus one sixteen sixteen minus thirty two minus sixteen. So k would be equal to four. Right, so value of k is four. See how easy it is. Just remember, when x minus four is factor or HCF of these two equations, that means put the value of x as four. Okay, if x plus four is the uh, factor, put value of x as minus four, so that this should become actually zero. So we have to put the opposite value. Right, moving to question number twelve. Five clocks ring automatically at intervals of twelve minutes, eight minutes. Three minutes, four minutes, and ten minutes, respectively. In eight hours from the moment they start, how many times will they ring together? Now, this is the most famous type of sums that are asked under HCF and LCM. Whenever you see such kind of sum that uh, there are intervals of uh, clocks ringing, or there is there are some signals on a road. Okay, there are some signals on a road, and the signals start or uh, switch off. at these intervals of time so find out at what time they will be on together or when they will be off together or over here they have asked how many times will they ring together after in 8 hours or something like that always remember it is a sum of hcf and lcm it is very easy do not leave it for option now out of hcf and lcm which one to find very easy let us see how to find out what we did in hcf we simply took some numbers and we divided them okay For LCM, how do we find generally the LCM? Say we took an example of two, and we write the table of two: two, four, six, eight, right? Then we take three, write the table of three, six, eight, and we have to find the LCM of these two numbers. Over here, we find the common multiples. That is the next instances where both of these meet. So always remember, whenever we have to find out how many times will they ring together after the start. it will always be the next instance and it will always be lcm just like in equilateral triangle okay we saw that we cannot find lcm we want the maximum length that can measure there we have hcf over here it would always be lcm because we have to find the future future can only be only be found out in tables like future right now it is 2 1 2 so after some time 2 2 2 
That means if they start at zero zero, then at two o'clock they will ring together. Then after again two hours they will ring together. So let us find out in eight hours from the moment they start how many times they ring. Now zero zero they start. Okay. After two hours they ring together. Again after two hours they ring together. Here it is two hours are over. Here four hours are over. Right. After again two hours they will ring together. Here six hours are over. Again, after two hours, they'll ring together. Here, eight hours are over. So, in eight hours, how many times they ring? One, two, three, and four. So, they ring four times in eight hours from the moment they start. See how easy it is. Whenever we have to find the next instance, always take the LCM. Okay. Now, many a times in exam, you might instead of the clocks ringing, you might have a signal on a traffic signal. There might be three to four traffic signals on a road. Okay, and they might be switching on and off. at some intervals of time and we have to find out when all of them show red or all of them show green and all that stuff just find the lcm moving to question number 13 three cyclists cycle along the circumference of a jungle they complete one round in 27 minutes 45 minutes and 63 minutes respectively since they start together when will they meet again at the starting position again this is similar to the previous sum okay very famous kind of sum these two we have to find the next instance when they meet and we know when we have to find the next instance it is just the lcm so this is the jungle okay the cyclists are over here 1 2 and 3 all of them start together and we have to find when was the next instance when they meet together again at the starting point what are the times given for the cyclists 27 minutes 45 minutes and 63 minutes and we have to find next instance that is lcm so find the lcm all these are divisible by 9 9 3s are 9 5s are 9 7s are 3 5 and 7 they are not uh, uh, divisible by any number okay so we will have the lcm as nothing but 9 into 3 into 5 into 7 9 into 3 into 5 into 7 what you will have 9 3s are 27 27 into 5 into 7 five 7s are 35 5 2s are 10 and 3 is 13 135 into 7 what would be the answer 75s are 35 73 21 324 271 0789 945 minutes after 945 minutes all the three cyclists will meet again and that too at the starting position okay moving to next question Manoj wants to paste wallpaper on wall of his room. The wall is four meters and fifty centimeters in length and three meters and fifty centimeters in height. But wall should be covered completely only by square pieces of wallpaper having same size. What is the number of maximum sized wallpaper squares needed to cover the walls completely? Now you might think this is such a big sum and. how to solve these kind of sums and this might be very lengthy but actually it is not it is very very easy over here again this is hcf and lcm kind of sum why we have to find maximum sized wallpaper squares what does this means greatest that means highest that means gcd or hcf now of what do we have to find the hcf let us see 
this is the room's wall okay length is 4 meters 50 centimeters okay let's convert everything into centimeters so we'll have 450 centimeters and the height is 350 centimeters we have to cover this with square pieces of wallpaper in such a way that the square pieces perfectly fit over here it is just like measuring an equilateral triangle right okay you cannot have half a piece like this or something like that you should have perfect pieces over here right so we have to find what we have to see what is the maximum size of piece that can fit over here so what to do just find the hcf of what 450 and 350 right what is it divide by 50 what you will get 9s are 7s are so you will have this and this and this as your uh, things which remain these two are not divisible okay by anything so don't consider these what is remaining this so this is the maximum sized wallpaper needed hcf is 50 centimeters right now this is the maximum sized wallpaper 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter it is a square right square wallpaper pieces are needed 50 by 50 they want what is the number of squares needed how to find number of squares very very easy what is the area of the wall 450 into 350 what is the area of one square wallpaper 50 into 50 how many wallpapers are needed simply area of the wall divided by area of one square wallpaper right whenever we have one wallpaper and how do we find how many wallpapers are needed simply find area of the wall divided by area of one square wallpaper okay one square wallpapers area and you'll get the total number of wallpapers what do we have this comes out to 9 this comes out to 7 this would be 9 7 the 63 so 63 wallpaper pieces which are square in size and having dimension 50 by 50 centimeters are needed to cover the wallpaper see very easy maximum sized wallpaper just find hcf okay and number of wallpapers are nothing but area of wall divided by area of the square piece right moving on question number 15 the sum of two numbers is 156 and their hcf is 13 the number of such number pairs is now this looks a little bit different or a little bit complicated and we have not seen how to handle these kind of sums but this is pretty easy this can be solved by logic okay now what do we know there are two numbers a and b okay their sum is what 156 what is their hcf it is nothing but 13 that means that these two numbers must be multiples of 13 then only can these be divided by 13 correct so let us find out what are multiples of 13 let us write the table of 13 13 ones are 13 twos are 26 threes are 39 okay 52 we'll have 65 we'll have 78 we'll have 91 104 117 and 130 and 143 and 156 why should we go till 156 because they have said that the sum of the two numbers is 156 okay if the if we go beyond 156 let's say if we take 169 now any pair which is there already the number is 169 which is greater than 156 so we cannot use it maximum amount the maximum addition should be 156 so max we can go up to 156 okay now let us see what to do what they say is sum of the two numbers is 156 now find the pairs whose sum is 156 13 if added with 156 can we get 156 no not at all 13 when added with 143 can we get 156 yes make this a pair okay this is one pair now this pair 13 and 143 what is their hcf or the highest common factor we know 13 divides this so 13 is nothing but the highest common factor so we found one pair let us write over here we found one pair which is having some 156 and hcf is 13 now 13 cannot be combined with any other number to get 156 we will always get less than 156 okay 26 26 when you add with 143 okay will you add with 143 no it will go beyond 156 just remember 26 add it with 130 you will get 156 you will observe that if you want 156 you just have to go this way right 
one number from year and one number from year right again one number from year one number from year right then one number from year and one number from year now let us see what do we have over here okay 156 okay 26 that can be added with 130 and we'll get 156 but what is the hcf for 26 and 130 for this pair that is 26 and 130 the hcf is nothing but 26 because 26 into 5 is 130 so we cannot have this pair cancel it out okay next is 39 and 117 okay 117 and 39 the addition is 156 right but what is the hcf over here it is 39 because 39 into 3 is 117 so highest common factor is 39 right it is not 13 so this pair also gets cancelled out now what do we have we have 52 and 104 right addition is 156 what is the hcf 52 into 2 is 104 so highest common factor is 52 so again it is not 13 highest common factor is not 13 so this does not satisfy our condition now we have 65 and 991 addition is 156 correct now we have 65 we have 91 addition 156 what is their hcf or the common factor 13 fives are okay and here we will have 13 into 7 there is no other factor to this okay no other number divides 65 and 91 only 13 divides these both so what we'll have we'll have 13 as the hcf so this pair also satisfies condition so we have two pairs now how many pairs we have two pairs now then we have 78 okay 78 plus 78 how much it is it is 156 and 78 again divides itself so highest common factor when it comes to 78 it is 78 only so we cannot consider this this gets cancelled so there are only two pairs which has some 156 and hcf as 13 right moving to next question question number 16 what is the least number which when divided by numbers 3 5 6 8 10 and 12 leaves in each case a remainder 2 but which when divided by 13 leaves no remainder okay options given are a 3 1 2 9 6 2 1 5 6 2 1 5 8 6 let us add an option say none of the above because generally in exams we find that option right none of the above now what we have seen over here why have uh, we given options over here because i want to show another trick which you could use in exam whenever time is a constraint and you are not able to solve using normal methods okay so what you can do you can take help of options now what have they given whenever the number is divided by 13 it leaves no remainder that means the number is perfectly divisible by 13 let us see which of the following are divisible by 13 312 is divisible by 13 962 is 1562 actually is not divisible by 13 and 1586 is divisible by 13 now here i am telling you in short okay you have to there you have to check whether it is divisible by 13 or not by dividing it right so c is not the option so cancel it right we have a b and d now what have they given least number which when divided by 3 5 6 8 they leave the remainder 2 so we'll first take option 1 312 this when divided by 3 5 6 8 10 and 12 it will leave remainder 2 that means if we remove the remainder 2 we'll have 310 and this has to be perfectly divisible by 3 5 6 8 10 and 12 but we can easily see 310 is not divisible by 3 so 312 cannot be the answer next let us take option d 1586 again this has to be divisible okay 1586 when divided by 3 5 6 8 10 and 12 leaves remainder 2 so remove remainder 2 what you will get 1 5 8 and 4 now this has to be perfectly divisible by 3 5 6 8 10 and 12 but this is not divisible by 10 so this is not the answer answer is 962 okay now let us check if there are four options you can click 962 but if there is option called none of the above you have to check whether 962 is divisible by everything or not take 962 okay again remove the remainder what you will get 960 right this is divisible by 3 you can see this is divisible by 10 you can see by 12 by 8 again by 5 since it is divisible by 10 it is divisible by 5 since it is divisible by 12 it is divisible by 6 so 960 so the answer is 962 see how easy hcf and lcm can be you just have to remember how to find hcf and lcm 
just practice little bit so that by seeing you will be able to find the LCM and the HCF okay and also remember the formula product of two numbers is the product of their HCF and their LCM okay with this we come to the end of tutorial on HCF and LCM if you like this video please give it a like and share it with your friends give your comments and suggestions below you can also mention topics on which you want videos we would be rolling out more such videos and tutorials so subscribe to our channel and stay updated